Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Run on the next group. I've got the whole bunch of them down looking at the mug files. I've got to see Baylor. Want to come along? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. 
We haven't had a bank job like this in six years. How's the guard? Uh, still unconscious. Doesn't look like he'll make it. Hello, Chief. Hello, Ben. Matt. Hello, Chief. I just had the witnesses look at the lineup. Didn't spot anybody. We haven't had a bank hold up in five years. In six years. Well, here's how it stacks up, Chief. Five men went into the bank at 11 this morning. As near as the bank can tell, they got away with close to 100,000. They ran for the street, and this bank guard pulled a gun, exchanged shots with one of the hold-up men. Giulio Bulati. Yeah, that's right. Bulati and the guard are both in pretty bad shape. Unconscious, not likely to live. Sergeant Quine's over with Bulati in case he regains consciousness. The other four left Bulati on the sidewalk, piled into a green sedan. Witnesses say it was either a Chrysler or a Plymouth. Couldn't get the license number covered with mud. Well, the witnesses have identified two of the holdup men, Leon and Jack Holstetter. We'd like to have those boys. Well, they've never operated here, Chief. All we know about them is what you got from Denver. They've been on the circulation for about seven months. Never pulled a job this big before, but that doesn't mean they couldn't. Originally from Oklahoma, a couple of brothers who started out bad, both have done time. Skipped out on their parole a year ago. Well, this Bulani is a local boy. We know him. He probably landed here, cased the job, and then rounded up some local talent. Well, that's what we're hoping for. We've got Bulani, but he may die before he can tell us anything. The other three boys are local talent. Maybe we can trace that green sedan. If it wasn't stolen. Well, even if it was, it'd be easier rounding up some of our own local hoods than it would the house center, brothers. We've set up the usual roadblocks. Covered the airports, the bus stations, and trains. The witnesses in the bank got a good look at all five of the men? Well, they say so. They identify the house, of brothers. Let's hope they can tag the other two. Now, what about the sixth? The man driving the car. Nobody got a good look at him. Just our luck. He's probably the one who owns the car. Yeah. Chief Bailey speaking. Yeah. Okay. You better get down to the hospital. That was Klein. Doctors say Bulati's regaining consciousness. Here comes Klein. Is he still conscious? Uh, no. Too late. Yeah. Didn't even get a statement. Just opened his eyes, took a look at me, and died. Yeah, please. Okay. <sighs> well, they didn't come up with one identification. I sent them home. Uh, cream, sugar? Uh, no, no. Thanks. <sighs> Not one identification. Now, they were a little vague. They all got a good look at the host of their brothers, but the others were off near the door or by the side of the room. Mm. They identified Bulali's picture, all right. They all got a good look at him while he was lying on the street. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping Bulali's death out of the papers. I want the Halstead of boys to think he can still talk. Yeah? We got the men you wanted down in the tank, Lieutenant. Okay. I'll uh, see him in the interrogation room. Stoolies? Yeah. We haven't been able to find out too much on Bulati. But maybe some of the stoolies might give us a lead. Sorry, uh... Won't be able to finish your coffee, man. Well, I hope something comes out of this. I hope so. Hello, Lieutenant Cudry. Hello, Bert. Good afternoon, Sergeant Clib. Hello. How are you? Is this about the bank robbery this morning? Uh-huh. I can't help you, Lieutenant. You know Julio Bulati? I heard of him. Don't know him. He was one of the men who stuck up the bank. Yeah, he got a hundred thousand, I hear. He sure had a lot of nerve pulling a job like that. What do you know about Bulati? I've heard of him. And what have you heard? Got a record. Just a hood. That's all I heard. Mm hmm Do you know any of his friends? No, Lieutenant. First National Bank they knocked over. Some nerve. How about the Holstetter brothers? What do you know about Leon and Jack Holstetter? Can't help you with this one, Sergeant. We've done you some favors, Bert. Oh, I appreciate the favors. I've done you some, Lieutenant. 
You can't help us? No, Lieutenant, can't help you. I'd like to help you, but I don't know nothing about the bank job. Or Bulati? No, Sergeant. Or the whole set of brothers? No, Lieutenant. You're sure, Bert? Oh, I'm sure. That's all, Bert. Thanks, Lieutenant. Yeah. Keep your nose clean. Yes, Sergeant. Good afternoon. Bye, Lieutenant. Yeah. Now bring in the next one. Uh, I hate working with those guys. Sometimes you got them. Cigarette? Oh, yeah. Here's Tony, Lieutenant. All right. Come on in, Tony. Hello, Lieutenant. Just sit down, Tony. Sure. Hello, Sergeant. We uh, want to ask you some questions, Tony. How about the bank job this morning, huh? Word gets around. Yeah, it sure does. I can't do you no good. Uh, did you know Julio Bulati, Tony? No, I uh, heard of him, no. Know any of his friends? No. How about Leon and Jack Holstead? Heard of them, too? Don't know <laughs> We only have one more. Amos here is the last one, Lieutenant. Okay. Come on in, Amos. Yeah, 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 Lieutenant. Have a chair, Amos. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> how, how you been, Sergeant? Uh, fine, fine. We want to ask you some questions. Sure. About the bank holdup this morning. I know. <sighs> they all do. You know Julio Bulati? No. I know a kid named Frank Merritt. Oh, you do, eh? Yeah. Good friend of Bilotti's. <clears throat> Here he was with him all last night. How about this morning? I couldn't say, Lieutenant. I hear there's Frank Merritt is from Denver. <clears throat> all Stutter boys are from Denver, ain't they, Lieutenant? Yeah, that's right. Now, where can we find this Frank Merritt, Amos? I don't know, Lieutenant. Got a hunch he's making himself scarce. How long has this Frank Merritt been in town? About two weeks, I think. Drove in from Denver in a green Chrysler sedan. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. I just saw Chief Baylor. And? And nothing. I'm getting sick of this. We get a lead and we sit around for two days. Yeah, I'm getting sick of it, too. But we can't find merit. Or the Holstetter brothers. Or an identification on the other two hold-up men. Or the green sedan. Yeah. FBI's got every available man on it. We've got every precinct in the city working on it. Sooner or later, we're going to turn up with something. Yeah. Ulcers. Well, now, look, if we don't pick up one of the Holstetter boys, then we might find merit and he'll lead us to the rest. If we don't find him, we may get a lead on that green sedan. There's so few green Chrysler sedans in this city. Maybe you have a better suggestion? No, but I have an alternate. Make some coffee. I'm sick of coffee, too. Well, then, you think of something. Hand me the coffee, John. Lieutenant Guthrie. This is quiet, Lieutenant. That bank guard just died. He never regained consciousness. Okay, come on in. Well, that's swell, Matt. Bank guard just died. No identification. Oh, where the devil are these guys, Matt? I always thought we had a pretty efficient force. They're keeping out of sight and good. Yeah. Well, they haven't gotten through the roadblocks. I haven't left the city unless they have Houdini's ghost with them. We'll get them, Ben. Sure. They're somewhere in the city. We've got them trapped and we don't know it. And you know something? Neither do they. Doing, man. You uh, knocking off? Yeah. You? Uh huh. Give you a lift? Oh, I'd love it. All right, Bill. All right, Lieutenant. 
Uh, good night, Bill. Oh. I'm a little tired. Yeah, me too. Want to stop and get some dinner? Oh, yeah, sure. Lieutenant! It's Quine. Wait a minute, Ben. Oh. Hey. Glad I caught you. Yeah, what's the matter? We well, think we've got the green Chrysler sedan spotted in a garage over on 3rd Avenue. Guy fitting Merritt's description brought it in yesterday morning for a paint job. What, uh, what were you saying about dinner, Ben? It's your listening post to the world. CBS new program, Hear It Now, featuring Edward R. Murrow, Friday evenings on most of these same stations. The top news of the preceding seven days, international, political, sports, entertainment, all the fields of interest are covered in this fascinating, noteworthy one-hour program. Oftentimes, you hear the actual voices of the people who've made the news on Hear It Now. Be listening every Friday for Hear It Now, your listening post to the world. That's right, Lieutenant. That's the fellow who brung in the car. That's it right over there, the black sedan. You painted it? Sure. That's what the fellow wanted. How'd I know you guys were looking for him? He just come in wanted a fast paint job. How'd I know? I'm in business. Got to make a buck. It was green? Sure. He wanted to yell at first, but I told him that for a good job, might have to sandblast. Stuff bleeds through. He settled for black and a fast job. Green don't bleed through black. Yeah. When is he supposed to pick it up? Some but time between 5.30 and 6. We close up at 6. Well, it's nearly 6 now. Yeah, maybe he spotted us coming in. We were pretty careful. He's done a good job, too. If you pick him up, who pays, huh? Quine, let me get behind one of those cars. All right. Merritt's picking the car up. He's probably expected back with a gang. We can't give him the car and take a chance on losing him in traffic. Oh, well, how can we take the time to haul him down to headquarters and sweat him? His friends will wonder where he is. We can't take the time. Huh? Well, then what? Then we'll sweat him right here. Maybe we can drag it out of him in a hurry. Uh, you got an office? Sure, right back there. Okay. Uh, get behind one of the cars on that side, Matt. No shooting if you can help him. Right. Shooting? Uh, get out of that cap and overalls. Huh? Get out of them. Hurry up. Okay. See if I can take him alone. Don't come out unless I give you the word. Okay. Matt. Say, aren't those overalls a little snug? Now, look, I'll take him first to... Oh, here he is. Hey, you! Yeah, we're just closing. I know it. I got a car here. Oh, okay. It's that uh, Blackman right over there. You remember I brought... Now, you ain't the guy who was here yesterday. No, no, he's uh, back in the office. Oh, uh, well, look, I'm in a hurry. Say, uh, you must be Mr. Merrin. Yeah. Hey, how did you know? Keep your hands where they are, Merrin. Hey, what is this? Police. Hey, now, wait a minute. Don't move. Put your hands behind your head. Hey, you're making a mistake. Where can we find the Holstetter boys? Who? Here, uh, here's his gun. Uh, get him in the office. Move. No, look, wait a minute. I, I tell you, you're making a mistake. That bank guard died, Merrin. What bank guard? What are you talking about? Move. Okay, okay. But I don't know what you're talking about. You stay out of here, Quinn, in case somebody else shows. Garage man's hiding down in the grease pit. Help him close up. Yeah, sure. All right. Sit down, Merrick. Look, sit down. Why don't you guys listen to me? You got a permit to carry this gun? Permit? Uh, yeah. Where is it? I left it at home. In Denver? No, no, where I live. Where do you live? Look, you got no right to ask you me. You were one of six men who stuck up the First National Bank three days ago. You're crazy. You and the Holstetter brothers. Oh, I didn't stick up no bank. I don't know nobody by that name. You know Giulio Bulotti? Bulotti? Giulio Bulotti. No. He knows you. He couldn't. Who? Well, why couldn't he? Because I ain't never met him. I don't know him. He swears he knows you. I can't help it. Maybe he, maybe he does, but I don't know him. I never heard of him. He says that you were in on that holdup. He's a dirty liar. I tell you, I don't know him. He's in the hospital. We got a sworn statement. I don't know him. I don't know him. He didn't like being left behind. What are you talking about, left behind? After he got shot outside the bank, you left him lying there. I didn't leave him nowhere. How could he I? He named I all I six men in that holdup. Well, I wasn't one of them. I swear you got you the... You got you and the Holstetter brothers. I don't know any Holstetter brothers. That's your sedan out there, isn't it? Yeah, so what? 
This is a murder rap, Merritt. That bank guard died. Listen, you can't do this to you me. You know my right man is enough to execute you. I don't know. No, you lie. What were you doing three days ago at 11 o'clock in the morning? Uh, three days ago. The 16th. At 11 o'clock in the morning. I don't know. I don't remember. How, how do you expect me to remember three days ago at 11 o'clock? You better start remembering, Merritt. Uh, I was having breakfast. Where? Well, I don't know this town very well. I don't remember. Some drugstore. Near where you live? Yeah. Where do you live? Roaming house on Baker Street. What's your address? 412 West. There's no drugstore around there, Merritt. Sure there is. One on the corner. That's the one you had breakfast in? No. You went to another one? Y- yeah. You walked? Well, no, I went to a drugstore further away. I don't remember which one. You drove? Yeah, yeah, I drove. In that car out there? Yeah. A dozen people identified that car as the one in front of the bank. Well, they're all nuts. They got the license number. They couldn't have. Because it was covered with mud? No, they just couldn't have. I wasn't near the bank. You know where the bank is? No. Then how do you know whether or not you were near it? You're a stranger in this town, aren't you? I told you, yeah. That car was identified as the hold-up car. You're in trouble, Merritt. Why? I didn't do anything. Give me a lawyer. We've got sworn statements from a dozen witnesses and Bulati. You won't stand a chance against the jury. I didn't pull no hold-up. Sworn statements, Merritt. I don't believe it. How do you think we found you? Might not execute you for state's evidence. I don't know nothing about it. Okay. I'm satisfied just to get this one, Matt. Take him down and book him on armed robbery and first-degree murder. Oh, wait a minute. We'll get the whole center, brothers, whether you help us or not. Yeah. Got a cigarette? Yeah. Where can we find the whole set of brothers? Will you go easy on me? No deals. I'll do what I can. You'll die if you don't help, Merritt. Okay. The Holstead of Brothers are down in a shack in the freight yards. Who were the two other men in on the holdup? I thought you said Bulati squealed on all of us. Well, I hope you won't hold this against us, Merritt. But Bulati's been dead for three days. It's Chief Baylor, Ben. Yeah, as if we don't have enough trouble. Hi. Now, we got the yard surrounded, Chief. They're down in that shack. You seen them? No. Merritt says they're down there. Quine and Asher have Merritt in the car. How many of them? A whole bunch, according to Merritt. All started brothers. A man named William White, Detroit record. A guy named Jake Harrison, also a Detroit boy. Merritt was supposed to pick him up in the car. You got lights? It's pretty dark. Yeah, four big ones. All right, now, what's the deal? Well, I, I'd like to get him out of that shack if I can. Merritt was supposed to drive up on that ramp and honk twice. Now, we got the sedan here, so what's to stop one of us from driving it up on the ramp and honking twice, and when they get halfway to the car, throw the lights on and cover them? Okay. Okay. Quine. Yeah? Come here. You still want to take that car down on the ramp? Yeah, sure. Well, go ahead. When you get down there, honk twice. All right, Matt. Alert the men. Right. Quine will have to drive the sedan down to the Lincoln Street entrance to get out on the ramp. Take him about five minutes. I hope those guys in the shack are patient. I hope those guys are in the shack. There's Quine. You did that in a hurry. Give me that microphone. Here. Here they come. I count three. Where's the other one? They're about halfway, Ben. Let them get a little further away from the shack. Okay. Lights! They don't know which way to go. Stand where you are. You're surrounded. They're running. Open fire! That's three, but where's the other one? Play those lights around the yard. Put one on the shack. There. There he goes. He climbed into that culvert. Hold your fire! Come on, man. Yeah. 
Th- that's the river overflow. Yeah, careful, man. We'll be setting ducks for it. I'm going in. I'm coming, too. Oh, come on. Stay out of the light. Keep against that wall. Okay, Ben, okay. Yeah. Come on. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, there he goes. Light up ahead at the end of the culvert. Yeah, there he is. He's hit, but he's still going. Watch yourself. There. There he is. Yeah. He's lying by the edge of the water. Roll him over. He's dead. It's Leon Holstetter, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the matter? Hmm? What'd you do to your knee? Oh, I skinned it. Well, you better put something on it when we get to the car. thing like that can be dangerous. Before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? <laughs> you people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room. May I have your attention, please? <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call up a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call the same. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, is written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Clayton Post, Robert Griffin, Raymond Burr, Earl Lee, High Everback, and Ed Begley. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Attention young women who are college graduates or who are in their senior year. Is the field that you've chosen for a career overcrowded? Is it a field that offers equality of opportunity? If you're worried about getting started, listen carefully. You can begin your career at a salary of over $300 a month. You can have additional schooling and training while you are earning. One month a year, vacation with pay, a chance to travel, and most important, you can serve your country at a time when you are needed. Sounds good, doesn't it? The Army is now offering to young women with college degrees the opportunity to become second lieutenants in the WAC regular Army. That means a lifetime career with security, with all the advantages and privileges of male officers. But you will have to hurry. Applications must be received by 6th Army Headquarters by January 15th. So act today, right now. We must see ourselves as others see us. If our nation is divided in any way by rumors or acts against other groups, races, or religions, we suffer. In these times of crisis, we lose not only abroad, but at home. Judge your neighbor, your fellow worker, on his merits alone. Dan Coverly speaking. This is CBS, where you find songs for sale every Friday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 